Hi guys, I hope everyone's having a great day. Um, I'm aware of the issue with the sound on my camera and I'm doing my best to figure out what it is. I think that the mic is right here and I'm trying to just hold it in my hand like somebody said Allie does and just turn it that way. Um, but we'll see. There's a 30 day return policy so if it doesn't end up sounding good I might have to return it but I hope not because I really like the other features. Um, now that I've been doing vlogs for a little bit and I've gotten such lovely support from you all and interest, I want to talk to you a little bit more about who I am instead of you just seeing what I do every day. I want you to know um, a little bit about me because um, why I want to do this is so that I can make, I can constantly be making my life more what I want it to be, but I also want people to be able to watch me and <clears throat> feel like um, they can do that along with me or they can um, find their own path to be happy to do whatever they want. Um, so that's not exactly easy for me because like most people, um, I've had a lot of bumps in the road um, coming up until now. So I just wanted to talk to you about um, one part of my life. Um, I'm only 23, but I'm really kind of old with how much I've gone through and how much, um, how many different things I like and all of that. But um, so one thing that is one of my greatest passions is alternative education. So I've never been to a traditional school. Um, my mom became really passionate about alternative education when my brother was born, and he is 37 now, I think. Um, so that was something that she really wanted to make sure that we all were able to experience if we wanted to. Um, and a lot of you might not know what that is because it's not a very um, well-known term, or when you hear alternative, you think of um, like troubled kids or something like that. Um, so. A progressive school is, um, I'll just try to explain it as quickly and um, easily as I can. Um, instead of having a bunch of desks and the teacher stands at the front and they teach one subject to um, a group of kids who are all about the same age, there's usually mixed age grouping, which means there could be a class of... Um, like when I had my class as a teacher, I had third, fourth, and fifth grade. But what you do is you sort of place kids where they need to be based more on their um, social needs and that sort of thing. Um, and it works wonderfully because you end up having peer teaching, so older kids will help younger kids or younger kids who know more. Um, in one area we'll be helping older kids. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm like nervous to explain this to you all because um, I'm so passionate about it. My, um, my focus of my bachelor's degree was in alternative education and my thesis which I wrote which um, you do for my college which was Goddard College is um, about creating a web of alternative schools, charter schools for migrant students, which might be getting too confusing for right now. <laughs> but um, So I just completely believe in this type of education for almost everyone because it, what you do is you find something that you love to do. Like when I was little, I loved um, the Middle Ages. And I just loved reading about them and watching things about that time and all of that and so you do a project on whatever it is you're interested in and so you do research and you incorporate almost all of your subjects into that project so you have um, my math was about these type of castles called concentric castles and I learned about the geometry of that and you just incorporate it all into one project um, and in addition progressive education and other types as well but it usually um, uses this theory called the multiple intelligences theory, which is um, put forward by Howard Gardner, but there's been a lot of people who have done work on it. Um, it's the idea that 
there are, instead of one type of intelligence, which we rate, in our culture, we rate intelligence on a vertical scale of not intelligent to very intelligent. Um, it's that there are all different kinds. So there's kinesthetic intelligence, which means you learn best with your body. So you might um, not be good at sitting down and memorizing something out of a book, but you learn well if you're um, if it's incorporated somehow into something like dancing or movement or something like that. Um, there is eight. There are eight different types right now, um, but they are constantly seeing if there are other types. Um, you know, there's people who are, like me, I'm, I am good at reading and writing and that sort of thing. So there's all different kinds of ways that people are intelligent and they're, to me, they're all equally valuable. And if you got this far in this video and you take away one thing from it, um, that's just so important to me because there are so many people in my life who I love so dearly and they think that they are not intelligent because that was was what they were taught or what our um, society says is that well if you're book smart that means you are smart and I know kids seven-year-olds who can take apart a radio and put it back together um, but because they can't take a standardized test and sit still for it they're not considered smart and they don't get um, really treated how they should be so um, Usually alternative schools try to respect um, all different ways that people learn and all different needs that they may have. Um, and Montessori is included in that as well. It's more structured than Progressive is, but it's quite similar. Okay. I was raised and grew up and graduated from an alternative high school, Montessori High School, and I went to New College, which is... Um, in Florida, it's our honors college. It's a state school, but it also has a program where there's no grades. Um, oh, and I didn't say that before. There's not usually grades or tests. There's um, written evaluations, which are more accurate because it can say what you actually need to work on instead of um, a number or a letter of how you did. So um, at New College, it was similar, and then... Um, after two years there, I transferred to Goddard College, which was so wonderful for me because it was more like the school that I grew up in, where um, at Goddard it's a low residency program and you... Oh, I'm talking way too much. <laughs> um, you travel there for nine days out of a semester, you create your curriculum there with an advisor, and... <clears throat> then you go wherever you live and you do your research. It might be um, interviews, it might be watching videos, it might be creating a dance or a poem or a movie or anything like that. Um, so it was wonderful for me and then you write a thesis at the end which um, takes a whole year. And I just love that school so much and that's why I want to go back for my master's in creative writing. When I was at Goddard, I was trying to figure out what was most important for me to learn. And for me, I want to make the world better. And so what I ended up figuring out was that I wanted to be involved in education, which is what I've been involved in um, through my own education forever. And my mom has also started several charter schools, um, and she is an advocate for alternative education as well. And so that was kind of weird to me because I was like, huh, I didn't even realize that that's what I wanted to do. So I started doing my work on that. And once I graduated, my mom and I had in a group, small group of other people, we had fought and fought to get a charter school approved in a small, very rural county called DeSoto County. Um, a charter school is a free public school that can be made with any, not any, with various sorts of programs. So we made our own progressive school model and we put it into a charter school because what we want to do is make progressive and wonderful alternative education available for all people instead of just people who can pay for private school. So 
We did that. That was a years long process and we got it approved in DeSoto County and we um, opened it shortly after I had graduated and I became a teacher there. Um, at that school we had a terrible experience because a lot of places are supportive of charter schools but a lot of them aren't because um, the traditional school system especially if they're very bad they don't want a charter school coming in and making things go differently and doing better than they are so it's like um, if you have an idea if you want to make a it's silly but if you want to make a Burger King in a new t in a town that's taken over by McDonald's and you have to ask McDonald's to allow you to come there um, and then McDonald's will say no and if they have to say yes they'll try to get rid of you really fast so that was pretty much what happened um, the school board and the district just fought against us tooth and nail. They did things where we didn't get the right amounts of money that we were supposed to, we didn't have the right um, food service, and we, like, um, our busing system was terrible where we were supposed to have, um, legally the kids are only supposed to have, I think it's um, 50 minutes one way um, of a bus ride, so 100 minutes round trip bus ride is a legal maximum here in Florida at least and some of the kids had five hour round trip bus rides. Um, it's a very long story but overall it was a horrible experience because we loved our kids. I had a class of third through fifth graders and I miss them so dearly and I worry about them constantly. Um, but we ended up having to close our school because we just couldn't really go on with um, all of the sides that we were being attacked from. There was a lot of people, teachers included, because we had to open the school with a very short amount of time, so we ended up hiring the wrong people who didn't understand the program. And there were teachers, parents, and the school board who don't understand um, how a school can function with no tests and no grades and how kids can learn by um, going outside and doing tests on the lake or um, feeding goats and if you've never, if this is the first time you've heard about alternative education that might sound crazy to you as well but um, I was raised in it and I feel very, very confident in what I learned in my education, so I'll tell you that it works, and it also is really much better for a child's spirit. Um, so anyway, we had to close our school, and it was awful, and that was around the time um, in the winter that we were filming in the Grove with Datev. Um, so I don't like talking about it, one, because it's really, really upsetting to me, but also because um, a lot of, most people on the internet don't really talk about their failures. <laughs> Why would you um, invite people to know things that have gone wrong for you? Um, but I just want you guys to know because I want you to know how I'm trying to figure out um, what to do and um, I want... <clears throat> I want you to feel that much happier when I tell you good things that happen to me and when I tell you failures I want you to feel like um, if you have them you can get over them as well. So um, I wanted to be a teacher for a short amount of time so that I could um, be in the classroom from the teaching side and not the student side and really learn um, how things worked that way but I actually I didn't want to be a teacher for more than a year or so and I didn't really like it because I'm really, I'm a homebody, I don't really like seeing people every day. I know most people would say, well yeah, if I didn't have to go to work every day it would be great. But um, for me, I don't really know what it is, but I just, I would get so nervous like on Sunday I would just be crying. Um, and I love my kids and I look forward to seeing them, but I don't like having to see all the parents and all the other teachers and um, just be on all the time because I'm just 
I don't know, I'm just really sensitive and I like working by myself and then having a time where there is a lot of energy with other people but then going back and reflecting and doing that work by myself. So it just really wasn't for me. I'm really glad I had the experience and that I found out so quickly in my career that I didn't want to do that kind of a job. Even though that work was so needed and valuable, um, it's just not healthy for me to have a job that I just, it's like, I don't know, like I kind of have not enough um, protection on my heart or something. Um, and even when I used to work um, at a cafe making crepes when I lived in Hawaii for a little while, I would just get so um, like used up at the end of the day because when people are just talking to me constantly, it's just like, I don't know, it just makes me <laughs> like a crazier version of myself. So, um, so I kind of freaked out because I didn't know what I could do that would be quiet. And I like to write for my whole life. Um, and people have said that they like things that I write, but I, and I thought, well, a dream job would be to write books, but I never thought that I could do it. I don't really know why, because I, I mean, I was raised to think that I can do anything I wanted. I guess I just thought, well, somebody has to buy it and nobody would buy my book. Um, but now I sort of feel like, well, I have to do what makes me happy. And now that I see, like, how a lot of my friends um, are able to make their own way, and I, can, I feel like I can make my own way, because I never do anything normal. I always have to do it the most complicated way, so why should I have a normal career when that doesn't really make me happy? So, um, I, at this point, who knows what could happen, um, but at this point I am planning on applying to get my master's degree in writing, um, at Goddard or at, um, another alternative college, um, probably around December. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a study plan for myself until then to make myself feel more confident about my writing skills um, until that comes. So I'm going to make a separate video that shows you how I'm going to teach myself because that's something that I know really well because I've spent, since I was five, um, in alternative education where I know what I need to learn and how to find that knowledge for myself. So I want to share that with you all because you can teach yourself almost anything or you can find the resources to help you. So I'm really excited to show you guys that video, but I just wanted to tell you guys about um, all of that because I wanted you to know where I am and where I'm going um, and that way you'll just feel so much more I don't know, excited when I, um, when I have my next step. Thank you so much for all of your support and thank you for watching and saying all the lovely things. I've gotten from all of my views of, of all my videos, which I think is now up to like 15,000, I have had one mean comment, which wasn't even really that mean, just said I was boring. Um, which I don't care. They can go watch something that's more interesting to them. But I think that's amazing. Out of all the views I've had, I have such wonderful people who say such thoughtful and uplifting things to me and tell me that I make their day better, and you guys just make my day so much better. When I wake up, I love to go look at the comments and um, hear about somebody who had an Australian Shepherd while they were growing up and they loved it, or hear about, um, I don't know, somebody who tried my dog food recipe or whatever. It just makes me so happy and um, I just appreciate it so much and I'm so excited to share whatever's coming up next with you guys. Well, yeah, I guess the overview is um, I don't really do anything normal. I hardly ever have hardly ever do, um, and I'm hoping that I can make a life and a career for myself where I can continue 
um, doing things how I want instead of how someone else decides that I'm supposed to. So um, I hope that if you have that feeling or even a little inkling that something's wrong for you in your life because you're doing what somebody else is telling you or um, you're just not happy with things, that you can watch this and hopefully I'll be succeeding <laughs> and you can feel like you can do the same thing with your life. And I hope that you guys can get inspired and feel like, well, I don't want to be a writer, but I want to do this other thing um, and feel like you can actually do it. So anyway, um, the next vlog will not be so serious. <laughs> and, uh, I just hope that you guys have a wonderful night or day or morning. Um, I hope that you can find something beautiful to look at and enjoy a beautiful sunset or something. And thank you again for all of your comments. I love them. I wish there were a thousand more that I could read them all because I just love checking it. Um, and I'm going to stop talking now. So. <laughs>